God is working in each and every season. His hand is on each and every season. And each and every season is serving a very specific and very strategic purpose. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Melody and I make faith-based content here on YouTube. I post new videos every single Monday. So if that is something you're interested in, definitely be sure and subscribe. I would love to have you join the family. So in today's video, we are going to be talking all about the four different spiritual seasons that we are guaranteed to walk through as believers. I recently did a video all about one of these spiritual seasons, the pruning season. I'll have that linked above here for you. And the Lord really placed it on my heart to dive deeper and to share with you all four of the different seasons because it's important for us to know what season we are walking through. Just like when it's winter outside, we are not gonna go ahead and put a bathing suit on and walk outside. We need to be fully equipped and to be fully equipped for a season, we have to know what season we're in. And because some seasons are more challenging than others, it's so important to have the correct perspective of each and every season. We wanna hold this truth in our heart. God is working in each and every season. His hand is on each and every season. And each and every season is serving a very specific and very strategic purpose. And all of that, the underlying foundation that we have to rely on is that we can trust God is good and that he has worked all of these seasons together for our good because we love the Lord. Now with all that being said, let's go ahead and hop into a verse before we jump into it that really breaks down how there is truly a season for everything. So I'm going to go ahead and pop it up on the screen for us to read it together and then we're going to jump into the four different spiritual seasons. So this verse comes from Ecclesiastes. It is Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 through 8. It says there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. So as you can see from this verse, there is truly a time for everything. And that same concept applies to us in the seasons that we walk through. Each and every season serves a purpose and each and every season will last a specific amount of time. Now, how long that is, only the Lord knows. And that's when it's important for us to just go back to that foundation of trusting him. Now, with all that being said, let's go ahead and hop into our four seasons. And all the Bible verses today that I'm gonna be pulling for you guys are actually coming from one book and that is 2 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians, Paul is writing a letter, his second letter to the church in Corinth. And this specific book of the Bible is just full of so much practical Christian advice. He is letting this church know how they need to operate, how they need to conduct themselves, and even spiritually what they need to expect to go through. And as we are navigating these different seasons, Paul gives such great explanations and instructions in 2 Corinthians that it was only right for me to go ahead and sprinkle those in as well. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So season number one, the very first spiritual season, and this this isn't to say the first spiritual season that you will experience, but this is just the first spiritual season on my list today. This season is the equivalent to winter and it is the stretching season. Now, when it comes to the stretching season, you heard that right, just what the word stretching implies, you are going to be stretched. This is a season for internal growth. Sometimes we can look outside in the winter and see a bunch of trees with no leaves on them and we can think that these trees are dead, but they are not dead, sis. They are alive on the inside. They are growing. They are still functioning on the inside. And that is also what's happening with us during a stretching season. We're experiencing the intergrowth, the growth on the inside. The Lord is stretching us in new ways that can cannot always be seen from the outside, from the naked eye. Sometimes you gotta cut something open, get a microscope to really see what's happening and to know that growth is really occurring. So during the season, it might be really easy for you to be discouraged, for you to feel like you're actually not growing when sis, you are. The Lord is still doing a really great work in your heart, even if you're not seeing the fruit of it yet in your life. When it comes to the stretching season, God knows ultimately the plans that he has for you and the person that you need to be to 
sustain the places that he's taking you to. You have to have the character to match the calling. And it's during this stretching season that the Lord is developing the character that you're going to need to sustain you in the place that he's ultimately going to be taking you to. So while the stretching season is definitely one of those more challenging seasons to walk through, we can rest in knowing and having this correct perspective that God is stretching us to enlarge us, to increase our capacity spiritually, to carry the anointing that is coming for the tasks ahead. Now the verses I have for you here, I'm gonna go ahead and pop them up on the screen. They come from 1 Corinthians. It is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. And again, this is Paul writing to the church in Corinth. He says, he, as in Jesus, comforts all of our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction, though the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as the suffering of Christ overflow to us, so also through Christ our comfort flows. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same suffering that we all suffer. So as you can see in these verses, Paul is letting the church in Corinth know that suffering often leads to an increased amount of patience as well as endurance. And oftentimes as we are navigating the stretching season and the tests that go along with it, it often can feel like suffering as well. So we can hold this verse close to our hearts to know that not only is the suffering producing patience and endurance, but also through the suffering that we go through in this stretching season, we're going to be able to comfort others. We're going to be able to relate to others and the challenges that they have also walked through. So at the end of the day, the Lord is doing a very good work in this season, like he is in all the seasons. So that is going to be number one, the very first spiritual season that you are guaranteed to walk through. So number two on our list today, the second spiritual season that you are guaranteed to walk through as a believer is the pruning season. Now I personally equate the pruning season to the spring season, and you might be wondering like, how do those correlate? So when it comes to spring, that is when new life is forming. We see all these trees that previously looked dead, the leaves come back to life, we see greenery, we see new flowers, but also we have to keep in mind that as these trees are blooming, as we are getting all of these new branches, we also have to go through and prune. We have to cut away at the branches that are not going to produce the optimal fruit that we want to reap during the harvest season. And that same concept goes for us during the pruning season. The Lord is going to cut away at those dead branches, whether they are relationships, habits, mindsets, friendship. Literally, the Lord is going to remove whatever is necessary for us to ultimately bear all of the good fruit that he wants for us. Now, when we go through the pruning season, it's definitely one of those more challenging seasons, just like the stretching season, because God is removing things from our lives. So during this season of pruning, expect to lose. Expect to lose the friendships that aren't serving you. Expect to lose the relationship that was never for you. Expect to lose the job that the Lord doesn't want you at. Expect to lose that relationship that was a source of comfort, but that ultimately wasn't pointing you in the Lord's direction, expect to lose. And as you have that perspective that you are losing ultimately to gain, ultimately to bear better fruit down the road when it comes to harvest season, this can hopefully help you walk through more confidently and more contently during a challenging season like pruning. Now the verse I have for you here, again, coming from 2 Corinthians, I'm gonna go ahead and pop it up on the screen for you. It is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 4 through 6. And it says, such is the confidence we have through Christ before God. It is not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything as coming from ourselves, but our adequacy is from God. He made us competent to be ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. The thing that stands out to me the most from these verses is the fact that Paul is saying that our adequacy comes from God. It is not coming from ourselves. And sometimes before the pruning season, we can rest on some of our accolades. Like, oh, I'm this type of person. I make this type of money. I have these type of friends. But when the Lord starts cutting things away, we really start to see what our foundation is built on, who our identity is built on. Is it on ourselves? Is it on what we do? Is it on our roles? or is it on the Lord? So as we're experiencing the pruning process, 
process. God is cutting away those dead things, those things that are no longer serving us the way that we think they are. We can get to this point that Paul is talking about, where we know that everything we have comes from God. Our adequacy comes from the Lord. So number three on our list today, the third spiritual season that you're guaranteed to walk through as a believer is a season that correlates to summer, and that is the dry season. Now, when it comes to the dry season, this is one that I have walked through the longest. Like the longest season that I know was the dry season. And it was one of the most challenging times in my life. During my pregnancy, I was actually in a dry season and I felt far from the Lord. I also didn't know what season I was in at the time. And so I wish a video like this existed to just help me navigate through it. And I also thought it wouldn't last so long. So I wanna just encourage someone, whoever is watching this to know that whether you're walking through the dry season, it feels like it's been months nine months maybe to know that you are going to come out on the other side like God is not going to leave you in this dry season you are not always going to feel far from him and these were lies that I was believing as I was walking through my own personal dry season not to say that I haven't experienced a dry season again but that nine month dry season almost took me out it was extremely challenging so that's the first thing I want to go ahead and put out there but let's get into some of the specifics when it comes to the dry season so just like during summer the dry season brings heat Things are heating up and the water is evaporating. So you might feel far from the Lord. This is a time where you might feel like you're going to your quiet place. You are opening up your Bible and spending time with the Lord and trying to seek his face, but you are not hearing from him in return. Now that isn't the case. I don't want you ever to feel, and it isn't ever true that God is not right there with you. While we might feel far from him, he is always right there. There. It's during a dry season that we stop relying on our emotions to know whether God is close to us or not. It's during the dry season that we stand 10 toes down and knowing that God is with us, whether we feel like he is or not. The facts are the facts. The father is always close to us. The dry season also helps us remove distractions from our life and it shows our soul what really quenches our thirst. It can be really easy to get our fix, to get our fix of water from other sources, but ultimately these other sources are going to leave us dry. When we are navigating through that dry season, we are already dry. And so we're realizing, oh, this thing that I normally go to to get some satisfaction, this actually isn't satisfying me. It leads us to the Lord. Now the verse I have for you here, I'm gonna go ahead and pop it up on the screen. It is 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. And it says, therefore, we do not give up. Even though our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day. For our momentary light affliction is producing for us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. So we do not focus on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. I love the first part of verse 16, where it says, we do not give up. It can be so easy to walk through the dry season and wanna just like, uh, what's going on? I'm done, God, what is happening? But here, Paul is really giving us the most perfect instructions that we can have. Do not give up, keep on going, sis, because on the other side, of the dry season is the harvest season. So let's go ahead and talk about season number four. Let's get into it. So number four on our list today, the fourth spiritual season is the harvest. Now when it comes to the harvest, this is where we get to reap what we have sown throughout those previous three seasons. Now something to keep in mind here during the harvest though, while there is going to be this sense of ease, we're going to be bearing fruit, God is still going to be correcting us in this season. He ultimately needs to prepare us for what is coming because this is our fall harvest season and winter will be coming. Winter is going to bring that stretching. So to prepare us for winter, we are still going to be corrected. We are still going to be shaped, but this is a season where we can experience just a little bit more ease, where we're able to see the fruit of what God has been doing in our lives. In this season specifically, I feel like it's when we're able to look back over those past few seasons and those experiences that we've gone through and those choices and those things that God took away and we can see how he was working it together for our good. Hindsight in this season of harvest is always 2020. And this is the time where we should write down exactly what the Lord did. We don't want to forget 
the ways that God worked things together. We don't want to be immune to the miracles that were performed that we're able to see now in hindsight. When we're walking through those more challenging seasons, it's easy to lose sight of the big picture. But in the harvest season, I found that it's so easy to see how God was truly orchestrating our steps. So make note of it, write it down, because as we go into that next season, which is going to be the stretching season, and how God was working things together even when we didn't realize it. Now the verse I have for you here, I'm gonna go ahead and pop it up on the screen. It is 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 9. And it says, the point is this, the person who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the person who sows generously will also reap generously. Each person should do as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or out of compulsion, since God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make every grace overflow to you, so that in every way, always having everything you need, you may excel in every good work. What I love most about this verse is how Paul says at the beginning that what we reap in this season is directly correlated to what we sowed. And this goes back to just fully embracing each and every season that the Lord has us in when we are in that season. Don't try to change your season. Embrace where God has you and know that he has you there for a reason. And as we wholeheartedly embrace whatever season that we're in, that is us sowing good seed. And that prepares us in this season to truly have a heart harvest worth reaping. So that is going to be number four. All right, sis, that is going to be it for me. These are the four spiritual seasons that you are guaranteed to experience as believers. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And now, of course, it is your turn. So in the comments below, I would love to know which of the four seasons are you currently walking through? Are you in your harvest season, your dry season, your pruning season, or is it your stretching season? And a little added bonus in the comments, also let us know what is one thing that you have learned during this season that you are in. I'll be dropping my responses down below. So definitely take a second, drop yours and scroll on through. All right, guys, as always, I love you and I will see you in my next video. Peace.